Namaskar. Meditation is a journey. It's a journey within. And we move from imperfection towards perfection, from animality towards divinity. This journey is not like anything else. It is really extraordinary. And we go through lots of transformations. These transformations can be divided into four stages. And at each stage, there is something we need to understand and to be aware of. So let's take a closer look. The first stage is the stage of struggle, where we face various challenges. And these challenges will come from both within and from without. There will be physical challenges like pains, pains in the knees, pains in the back. Or we may even op face opposition from our family or from our friends. They may worry about us, they worry if meditation is good for us or not. But the biggest challenge will come from within, from within our own mind. Millions of thoughts are waiting to be entertained and one has simply no control over the mind. But various techniques and practices have been developed to overcome this stage. And with a bit of patience and a bit of determination, one will succeed. Especially important during this stage is the regular practice of yoga poses, the asanas. And at the same time, one should try to change one's food habits and take a more pure, a more sattvic diet. This will help to gain control over the mind, and then one will gradually enter stage two. Even though one can only concentrate for like five seconds during the meditation, this is considered as a great success, and one will progress quickly. As one now has more control over the mind, one's mental activities can now be guided towards the higher levels of the mind deep within. This will develop our more refined human qualities and we will radiate more love and more compassion. This is a very pleasing stage and we will gradually start to experience the supreme reality. The bliss and the glimpses of spiritual ecstasy we sometimes feel in this stage is something we did not even know existed. And it's normal that tears of joy will roll down the cheeks while we meditate. It's a very inspiring and uplifting stage. This will inspire us to practice more, and we will progress into stage 3. How long this will take is very individual, and it depends upon the intensity of our practice. One gets more control over the mind, and one's mental activities, like thoughts and emotions, can now be fully directed towards the supreme reality, the supreme consciousness. And then, a specific challenge starts. We start to develop supernatural and spiritual powers. For example, if one concentrates on any topic, on any object, one will understand it fully, without studying anything about it. Or if one concentrates on a person, one will know everything about them. Everything. This is a sign of great progress, of a great step forward, but it is a very dangerous stage. Pride and ego easily develop and, must, and one must be tempted, one be, get tempted to misuse these powers because these powers are very attractive. When the mind gets attracted and directed towards the powers, meaning, one has mind, meaning the mind is not directed towards the goal anymore, it is not towards the Supreme Consciousness, mind moves its focus and moves towards the powers. And this is the spiritual downfall. Power corrupts. And the greater the powers, the greater the downfall. Unless one has the strength to control the power. At this stage, the guru, the spiritual teachers, teacher plays an important role. And at, actually at any stage, the guru is important. One cannot even start the journey without the guru. He knows everything about the path and will follow and guide the student at every step. Only the guru can teach how to handle his powers. And if the student is still not able to do so, the guru can withdraw the power for a while until one gains sufficient mental strength to handle them and use them correctly. Therefore, a guru is very much emphasized, and especially in Tantra and Tantric meditation. Unfortunately, fake gurus sometimes appear and corrupt the reputation of the real ones. Gradually, we gain sufficient control to handle the powers and maneuver through stage 3. This will bring us to the fourth and last stage of meditation. Then all our mental activities are directed towards the highest, the purest, and the most subtle layer of the mind, the Supreme Consciousness deep within. 
then we will realize our true self. It's like when a drop of water merges into the infinite ocean. It becomes the ocean. There's no separation anymore. There's no duality anymore. It's just oneness. Oneness with the infinite ocean of bliss. And this is the goal and the final stage of meditation. One loses the individual mind, but one gains everything. One reaches the Supreme Brahma. One reaches Parama Purusha. And these are the four stages of meditation. If you're interested to learn more about this fascinating world of meditation, you can subscribe to our channel and remember to hit that like button too. And that was all for today. I hope you found this interesting and see you again soon. Thank you very much and Namaskar.